the big Dalai Lama, Israel. We pray to you as you're teaching us. Oh, oh, where is God gone? I look for him all day, couldn't find him. Do you know where God gone? Do you know where God gone? Who knows where God is? We don't know. We're missing person. Ellie, do you know? No. Okay. Wow, some drawing. What's that? Good session. Well, put your ear against the soundboard, it's nice. So, we're here in this place called Namaste, and we're feeling the spirit of Namaste. I'm feeling it at least. Namaste. Seems like Allegra is feeling it too, but she had a moment of revelation. And Allegra, can you share this with us? That revelation? Okay. With the sleep. So, imagine that you have. You're in the field of poppies. Okay. Which also ends up there, lest we forget. But you're in a field of poppies, and you look down. And you look down, you look all, look all around, and the flowers, they all have stalks and a bloom, but they might be differing heights, right? So that means the stalk is different, the different length. The destiny of that seed, that poppy seed, is to become beautiful blue, right? So it doesn't matter how long it takes for the stalk to grow before it blooms. Its destiny is to become the flower, just, so, just like us. If we're growing and all of a sudden to our neighbor blooms into this flower as we're growing, it might be easy to look over there and think, oh, why haven't I bloomed to that yet? I want that! I want that! And it's like, no, just keep, keep growing, little stalk. Focusing on because your own stalk and Nourish your stock. Before you know it, you're gonna bloom. So we all have different look at timelines. The sunlight, look at the yeah. Distance. So that that's why that's why you don't need to be threatened by someone who is just like you and is doing exactly what you want to do right now, and you're not. Don't be threatened by that. It's actually it's kind of exciting because you know what your what your destiny is because that's what you realize that's what, that's what I want. And maybe you really don't actually want that flower, that certain bloom, but. As soon as you see some, someone that has what you want and they're living the dream that you want, just be like, oh, okay, that's another petal in my bloom that's coming up, okay? My stalk is, it's grown to the sky. It's coming. That's all for now, folks. Hello. It's been another day in the lap of luxury, and we're just tuning in to say goodbye and good night. Today was one of those just super rich, delicious days where you walk away feeling like, wow, I learned so much today. I made so much progress within myself and in the way I see the world and in the way I treat myself. And that's how it was for me. Um, today was Anzac Day, and kind of tear I kind of started tearing up as I as we kind of accidentally stumbled upon the town of Young, and they were having their Anzac morning um, ceremony. And I don't know. I just kind of like the reverence and the and the and like the moments of silence amongst the crowd was very touching, you know, and I love, so, you know, honoring sacrifice that's made in the, in the name of loyalty and love. It's, you know, it's really always something very moving for me, for everyone, I think, probably, but, and then I, another highlight of today was Spending time reading the Book of Mormon. I'm in Second Nephi, Nephi chapter 9, and it occurred to me that maybe as Jesus was growing up on the earth, as he was reading the words of Isaiah, I almost feel like the, the words of Isaiah are written by Jesus. 
they are pretty much kind of like a pep talk for him his future mortal self you know it's like awake arise you know don't forget who you are you have a plan you have a mission you are precious and I loved thinking about the younger Jesus reading those words and taking comfort and faith in his divine identity because I'm sure he would have been you know had doubts I mean like been tempted by doubt you know because otherwise he wouldn't know how what we experienced so anyway, that was a highlight for me but there were so many highlights we did so much driving through interesting Gunda guy went to Gunda guy on the road to Gunda guy and we met Saki's family. You're going to hear from her. She's keeping really quiet, I know. But you're going to hear from her. Amazing people. Oh, gems. We basically had, like, such a beautiful... I just, like, got such a testimony of the gathering of Israel. I don't know. So special. And last thing, last highlight of today was me realizing practicing once again that I am free to choose what I focus on and what I feel and I feel so supported by Heavenly Father right now because I'm supporting myself more if that makes sense so yeah enough of me back to you Sagi Roger Roger <laughs> Hi everybody, as you can see I'm delighted by this wonderful princess of light to my side and it was a beautiful day, it was a sunny day and we got to travel a lot and see the mountains and see a lot of sheep <laughs> and a lot of cows and I loved eating Indian food at a place called Namaste mm. and I of course I loved meeting my family and that I've never met them before my dad's brother in Albury that's where we are right now and we got to play some songs for them and even though they're Jewish we get to play well because they're Jewish we get to play and they sing with us in a very special moment. Look at this! They loved the Latter-day Saints that they knew. Like they had only great experiences with them. And they were just like so happy to find out that I was a Latter-day Saint. And probably that even you were. I mean, it just was such a beautiful meeting, a marriage of minds. And and Judeo-Christian values. Bye. Love. <laughs> and then we played for them Love at Home because they have love at their home. Mm -hmm. And it's just the, the wooden floor, the wooden cabinets and everything just resonated. Our sounds, the harp and the hand fan and our voices and it just felt very spiritual and very warm warm sound, warm emotions and we just had a great time Ooh.